Thank you so much, um, sir, chair. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm going to be presenting on behalf of Dr. Catherine Curran on a preliminary costing exercise on annual retesting using HIV self-testing within the Partners PrEP study among serotis coordinate couples and HIV self-testing sub-study in Thika, Kenya. The authors of this abstract declare no conflict of interest. Just to provide a quick background, pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, is daily oral antiretroviral drugs for people who are HIV negative to prevent the acquisition of HIV infection. At this conference, the WHO has just released the consolidated guidelines for key populations. The guideline features a strong recommendation for PrEP for men who have sex with men and a conditional recommendation for other populations as an additional prevention strategy. A key benefit of PrEP is that when taken consistently, it has been shown to reduce the risk of HIV infection for those who are at high risk. However, despite the scientific evidence about the benefits of PrEP, there are still questions about how PrEP could be implemented, such as who should take PrEP, how should it be delivered, how much does it cost, how can costs be reduced. The, que the question of cost is a key concern when it comes to implementing PrEP in real world settings. Despite the new 2014 recommendations and the 2012 recommendations, many countries will continue to question whether they have the resources and the capacity to make PrEP available. Although there are many factors that result in a high cost of implementing PrEP, a frequently cited factor is retesting. Retesting every three months, recommended by CDC, for HIV-negative individuals on PrEP is a priority, as it will monitor and prevent against seroconversion. This is a priority as individuals on PrEP who seroconvert could develop drug-resistant virus. This not only has serious public health implications, but also high cost implications of lifelong treatment and care and decreased quality of life. Likewise, frequent retesting can burden health workers, facilities, and patients alike, and may act as a barrier to the uptake of and the access to PrEP. Because of these challenges, we decided to examine if self-testing an innovative approach to HIV testing could reduce the cost of retesting, the retesting that's necessary for PrEP implementation projects. So before I go into our methods and findings, I just want to take a step back to explain what we mean by self-testing. HIV self-testing is a process in which an individual who wants to know his or her status performs a test and interprets that test in private. This generally refers to the use of rapid diagnostic tests that are finger stick capillary or oral fluid based tests. All reactive, positive tests results need to be confirmed in facility. All users should be made aware of the window period, recommendations for HIV negative individuals at high risk to retest, and where and how to access services. There are many possible models that could be used for HIV self-testing, including supervised and unsupervised approaches. For the purpose of our exercise, we examined retesting with self-testing through two facility-based models with different levels of supervision, and we compared the cost of these options to each other and existing facility-based retesting within PrEP implementation projects. To conduct this analysis, we drew from the open label PrEP's PrEP's PrEP study, Partners PrEP study, and the HIV self-testing sub-study among serotis coordinate couples. Within the sub-study, HIV-negative individuals are trained on how to use a self-test kit, all HIV-negative participants are tested quarterly before receiving their PrEP prescription. And currently, the study is not using self-test kits for retesting, but examining uptake, acceptability, results, and user preferences. So we considered, uh, so based on that model, we, the model they employ in Partners PrEP, we made a few assumptions based on the current commodities they use, health worker time and salary in a facility, as well as the time to train an individual on how to use a self-test kit, the serial algorithm they employ, and the rate of enrollment as of February 2014. We then took this information and created a costing sheet to assess if there were potential cost savings for 100 users in the first year of PrEP implementation. So we considered three options. Option one, standard facility-based testing um, every three months in a PrEP implementation project. Option two, supervised self-testing, where an individual tests in a facility in a private place every three months. And option three, 
an alternating between quarterly visits every three months, between facility-based testing and at-home self-testing. So really, it's you take a facility-based test at three months, and then the next three months, you would have an at-home self-test, and vice versa. So we, this is what we kind of found. Currently in the Partners Prep study, HIV self-test kits cost just above $10, as you can see kind of where that green line meets. At this price point in the graph, at minimum, the proposed cost of self-testing approaches are just above $100 per client annually. Thus, facility-based retesting for PrEP implementation is significantly cheaper per client at around $80. However, based on our other ongoing research in, Mala in Malawi, HIV self-test kits are available for around $3. At this lower price point, the cost of retesting and PrEP implementation projects using self-test kits is between $70 and $80, suggesting possible cost savings for using self-test kits for retesting within PrEP projects. So when we examined our cost estimates, we looked at the annual total cost per client. It showed that health worker time is the most expensive compared to other costs factored in. We were initially surprised to see that supervised self-testing was less expensive than unsupervised self-testing. However, this is primarily due to how we estimated health worker time. In particular, we assumed that supervised self-testing would require, more, or require less health worker time because of more frequent visits, and that unsupervised self-testing would require more time due to less direct engagement with facilities. However, if you expand this preliminary exercise, it's foreseeable that this could change substantially. To look at this further, we then conducted a sensitivity analysis for the different options using health worker time and the cost of self-test kits as variables. And I'm not going to go into this too in depth, but just to give you a sense, this is supervised self-testing, and we did identify in green and orange where there are options where there are plausible scenarios where self-testing could have cost savings, and likewise for unsupervised self-testing. So what are our key findings? Retesting within self-testing, with self-test kits, could be less costly than current facility-based retesting. Annual retesting with self-test kits costs less than facility-based testing when self-test kits are about $5 or less with a supervised self-testing approach, and when self-test kits are about $3 or less with an unsupervised self-testing approach. Other retesting scenarios using self-test kits may also lead to cost savings, but we did not analyze this. So, big picture, what does this mean? So, although we found that self-test kits are expensive, health worker time in our model was much more expensive. Decreasing the amount of health worker time and the cost of the test kits could potentially reduce the cost per person. Sensitivity, the sensitivity analysis showed us that there are also many scenarios where self-testing, supervised and unsupervised, could be less expensive. So, there are many limitations to consider when interpreting this data. This preliminary exercise only factored in retesting costs, not additional services within PrEP projects. The assumptions were based primarily on Ken only in Kenya, which may be at higher, the health worker time may be higher than in other settings in Sub-Saharan Africa. Only two options of retesting using self-test kits were assessed. There may be other approaches that could be used and may or may not lead to cost savings. Assumptions did not include opportunity costs, which is the cost to the patient for seeking services or accessing PrEP at a facility, and other benefits that may be caused by introducing self-testing for retesting within PrEP projects. We also only examined the first year of retesting costs in a PrEP implementation pro program, so it's foreseeable that over time costs could go down. And the potential public health impact and risks that may at result, those were not factored into this costing exercise either. So what are our conclusions and next steps? We sought to examine in our, in our costing exercise if there were potential cost savings for introducing self-test kits for retesting within PrEP implementation projects. However, we found that self-test kits cost, the cost of the kits would need to be reduced to about $3 or less to see a significant impact, as well as a reduction in health worker time. More research is needed to explore the potential and the possibilities for self-testing within PrEP programs. We hope this preliminary analysis will help jumpstart the conversation and get people who are doing modeling for self-testing to work with people who are already doing modeling for PrEP programs. And as a result, we hope that this results in more uh, in-depth research and 
innovative thinking about how to best utilize HIV self-testing. I'd like to acknowledge all my authors, or the co-authors of this abstract and their respective institutions. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Cheryl, you may say maybe we have time. I think we have like three minutes for a couple of questions. So you can find the microphones. Um, thank you for that. Um, Philip Kane from the Kirby Institute. Sorry if this is a naive question, but um, in someone taking PrEP, would um, the uh, development of antibodies be delayed? So would there be implications for the window period of, and uh, sensitivity of a, a point of care test? Um, I, I think that's a really great question, actually. I don't think it's naive at all. Um, I'm not an expert on the biological factor. Um, I can tell you there has been a recent publication in PLUS One that examined the use of oral fluid and finger stick tests for people living with HIV that are on uh, prolonged treatment. And we know that on, when someone is on prolonged treatment that there can be, there's this reduction in antibodies. So I think that's a really good question for the PrEP community when choosing a self-test kit. Um, it may not be an oral fluid test. It could potentially be a finger stick test that might be more sensitive. Uh, but I think it's a really important question if you're thinking about you know, what test to choose. That, that's really where further implementation research or questions lie. Please. Uh, Tony Mills from Los Angeles. <clears throat> As a physician and a prescriber of PrEP, I was a little concerned about a couple of things. Certainly, um, I didn't like that thought that seeing my patients was actually a burden. I never really thought about seeing my patients being a burden. And I mean, one of the things that's so important in the US right now certainly is the cascade and linking people to care. And linking people to care not only after they're diagnosed, but before they're diagnosed. So one of the things I think is one of the greatest advantages of PrEP is we get to uh, identify those patients who are high risk and link them to care prior to their diagnosis. So I just don't see where that fits in in, in your scenario. I, I mean, I think what we've put forth is a lot of hypothetical situations. It's not something that's really been done. And we were just looking at, is this even worth exploring? Could we mod, you know, look at some potential savings or interest? And would this pique the interest of others that are looking at how to make PrEP more feasible? I, I definitely take your point, and I think it's a very good one. Uh, and our analysis is limited that it's only from a health system perspective, and it would be great to be able to factor in the patient user, the people that are using PrEP, and what the opportunity cost really is for them to attend a facility every three months versus maybe every six months. So I think that that would be an ongoing conversation for future research. <laughs>